that we took the MDS out of the uh, space shuttle, we're going to put two lockers that come off of the ISS. There's Danny uh, with one. Uh, they don't uh, fit exactly the way that our shuttle lockers do, so uh, previous to Danny bringing the locker in, I had installed two uh, adapter plates that go in the back there to allow the, the bolts on the lockers to line up. It's always fun up on the shuttle order station when you get a chance to work with tools. We get some great training uh, for in-flight maintenance down on the ground. Danny doing the uh, EMU uh, transfer, uh, and he's being guided from uh, behind from uh, with Tim Copra. So they're transferring the EMU suits to the uh, airlock on the International Space Station. Uh, we have a big day tomorrow, busy day, where uh, Danny and Nicole will do the uh, first uh, EVA. You can see me there trying to get out of the way because it's a big package that uh, Danny is transferring over and uh, it's a long translation path and then once he gets to the airlock, uh, he of course uh, has to uh, secure them and then uh, we spend a good part of the day uh, prepping them for tomorrow's activity. And uh, here we have uh, a Christer and a uh, Frank DeWin uh, getting ready to uh, to open the MPLM hatch, and uh, as you can see, uh, Christopher has been working all day in terms of uh, getting it ready, pressurizing it, and opening it, and was very uh, successful in doing so. Uh, over here, you can see uh, Danny and Nicole uh, prepping the uh, the suits. As I mentioned earlier, we spent a uh, great deal today, uh, mostly them, uh, prepping the suits for tomorrow's uh, EVA. You can see Nicole uh, making sure she has all her EVA tools and, uh, and all her tethers and everything uh, that she needs for tomorrow's activity. Frank coming up from uh, where we are working on the MPDM uh, hatch, or rather the node hatch first, and then an the MPDM hatch, and then there's also a lot of leak checks and things. So there's a couple of hours work actually before we can uh, open the hatch. That's the thermal cover we're kind of removing, which was on the outside of the uh, CBM. You can see uh, Christopher removing the uh, CPAs. These are the controllers for the bolts that uh, that bolted the MPLM to the uh, space station after Kevin and Mike installed it. And there's Frank uh, also helping out with that task. Hello, Marte. Yes, I'm just a bit out of the planet. Just want to send you along from you. Christopher is doing a KO in Spanish, so we're able to reach out to an entirely new audience. That's module on the space station, Leonardo, and uh, it's a bit funny, the two Europeans up here out of the 13 person crew are working on this to get into the European built uh, Leonardo. Right now we're actually, we're the last uh, thing doing, putting up a cover so we won't get stuck in uh, bolts and uh, cables and things when they later will go through that hatch many, many times with a lot of transfer through that hatch many, many times with a lot of transfer items coming from inside the MPDM. So here we are turning the handle very carefully following the procedures. To be honest with you, they had a little bit of a problem there because uh, it was harder than expected to get it, uh, the, the hatch open. But after a few minutes, 
hiccups, we finally managed to get it open. In the M, we are tying up uh, six racks, three for uh, crew support on the space station. It's a crew uh, quarter for one of the members here. There's a big uh, treadmill, and uh, there's also something called an atmosphere revitalization system to keep the air clean. And here, after, as I said, a little hiccup, we finally managed to open the hatch to the m, &M. We have to have masks and goggles on in case there will be bad air or something floating around, but it was very pristine inside the m, &M. Great to groundwork from everyone at KC has prepared it. It looked very nice and clean. You can see there's full of bags and rags, which we are doing in the next coming days. Everything will be transferred over to the station. And then we'll fill up with other things which need to go back to uh, Earth with us. Here's an example of the first uh, bags getting transferred one after another. This is a very efficient way to do it when we can line up a lot of people and hand it from one person to the next one. Yeah, Discovery, why don't you Danny pause your uh, narrative now? Passing it on to Mike Barrett on the station. And they're trying to see this is in the Japanese module. Let's get Pat waving there, and behind them, you can see other crew members working on something. First, the transfer done, had the crew members floating out of the m, &M hatch. And uh, now we're looking forward to several days of uh, transfer. This is uh, the uh, NLP experiment that we had on, uh, was activated on flight day two. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, terminate it. It's a couple of my good uh, pilot buddies looking on as we're doing some pilot science. Just turn that crank until uh, the line meets, and then give it uh, four shakes and put it back in the uh, Ziploc bag. Final thing we had to do is a uh, EVA uh, tag up. Had the entire crew there. There's a lot of robotic support uh, required for tomorrow's EVA, uh, which will be done by Bob Thursk and uh, Kevin Ford. So they're getting all that uh, briefing squared away. And then uh, Pat is going to be the uh, procedures IV, so he's going through the checklist and the overview to make sure everything's in good shape. Cam and Jose will be uh, suiting up, and uh, so it's an entire uh, team effort here. Well, it was a great uh, flight day four on orbit, Houston, and we just want to thank everybody for the uh, great support from the ground, and we're looking forward to a great flight day five with uh, EVA and a lot of good rack transfers. Thank you. Good night.